بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولهم بعد This is our 14th lesson going through the poem at Durr al-Awamir في أصل مقرأ الإمام نافع أثب علي بن بره We stopped at the statement of the author القول في الإظهار والإدغام وما يليهما من الأحكام and so here the author is talking about, or he's moving on now from Al-Hamazad to the chapters pertaining to al idhar and al idgham And if you study the Shaltibiya, then you would know that the type of idgham that he is speaking about here is the idgham al mutajanisayn al sagheer or the idgham al mutaqaribayn al sagheer and we commonly mention it as ذِكْرُ ذَارِ إِذْ وَدَارِ قَدْ وَتَأْتَنِيَةِ السَّاكِنَةِ وَلَامْ هَلْ وَبَلْ Right? And so that is essentially what the author will be discussing in this chapter. الإظهار, we should know the definition for it. معناها البيان. Its meaning is البيان. Uh, and essentially what it is, uh, is to recite each letter from its point of articulation without any merging or without any changing to that letter. Man aman, the noon here is recited with idhar. Why? Because the hamza comes after it, as we should know. Then we have al idgham. Al idgham linguistically means to merge, al idhal. And essentially, what's happening here is you're merging one letter into another letter such that they become one emphasized letter. Uh, idgham is to merge together one half into another half بحيث يصيران حرفا واحدا مشددا right so that's معنى الادغام من ماء right so you have the min and then ماء when you can join them together it becomes من ماء so the noon and the mean when they merge them together it becomes one half a mean which is مشددا and so here the author is going to speak about باب الاظهار والادغام right and as I mentioned he'll talk about ذا الإذ ذا القد تأتنيث الساكنة عن هل وبلام هل وبل and as we know the reasons for إدغام are either remember the إدغام can be divided into two categories كبير and صغير كبير is of course when you have the first letter and the second letter being متحرك and when you have صغير the first letter is ساكن the second letter is متحرك then you have the إدغام dividing into مثلان متقاربان متجانسان متجانسان إن في الصفات والمخارج التفق حرفان في المثلان فيهما أحق so the مثلان is when the مخرج and the صفة of the two letters are the same like وقد دخلوا قد دار ساكنة followed by another دال these two letters share the same مخرج share the same صفة so we do إدغام قد دخلوا good you then have متجانسان متجانسان they have the same مخرج but different صفات like the دال and the تاء قد تبين as we'll see inshallah okay and then you have المتقاربان in which they have not the same مخرج nor do they have the same صفة but they're very close to one another right like the ذال and the جيم مثلا نعم they are متقاربان طيب then the author he says وإذ لأحرف الصفير أظهر ولهجاء جودة ليس أكثر أو جودة of course إدغام جودة ليس أكثر here now the author begins with ذال إذ now as we know in the شاطبية نعم إذ تمشت زينب صار دلها سمية جمال so this letter or this word إذ it can be followed by uh, any of the Arabic letters now there are six letters تمشت ت زينب زاي صانا صاد دلها دال سمية سين جين جمال these six letters that's khilaf concerning whether you recite with idgham or idhar between the qurra between the qurra in general طيب and we, we can speak about that in ash-shatibiyya but for here for nafi' قال, uh, قال ابن بيري وإذ ليحرف الصفير أظهر so when إذ is followed by أحرف الصفير as we know أحرف الصفير is الصاد الزاي and the sin you recite it with idhar ولهجاء جدتا likewise the uh, word جدتا the letters that make up that word so the جيم the دال and the تاء so you have those six letters that I mentioned نعم إذ تمشت زينب صالة دلها سمية جمال حروف الصفير three and جدتا جيم دال and تاء so when these letters come after the ذال of إذ you recite it with إظهار for نافع you recite it with إظهار for نافع and so you don't do إدغام and so مثلا example could be مثلا 
ولولا إذ سمعتموه you would not recite with إدغام فنافع راضي would recite with إظهر likewise مثلا وإذ زينا وإذ زينا likewise مثلا وإذ صرفنا so you won't recite with إدغام you won't say وإذ صرفنا you won't say وإذ زينا you won't say uh, ولولا إذ سمعتموه راضي would recite with إظهار for uh, نافع as a whole likewise in the uh, the جيم مثلا إذ جاءوهم uh, right وإذ جاءوكم you're, you won't say إذ جاءوكم rather you would say إذ جاءوكم إظهار likewise uh, مثلا إذ تستغيثون ربكم well, another example إذ دخلوا على, عليه إذ دخلوا you were recited with إضغام but إظهار for نافع just like you would for حفظ no. then the author he says وقد لأحرف الصفير تستبين ثم لذال ولجيم ولشين وزاد عيسى الضاء والضاد مع ورش للإضغام فيهما وعا when it comes to دال قد we should know وقد سحبت ذيلا ضفا ظل زرنب جلته صفاه شائقا ومعولا and so we should know that the letters uh, that can come after the دال القد in which there is potential خلاف between the قراء uh, here we have أحرف الصفير again so the صاد زاء النسين likewise the ذال the جيم likewise ضاء وضاد okay so when it comes to أحرف الصفير and when it comes to the ذال the جيم and the شين right you recite with إظهار so when you have the قد and what comes after it is أحرف الصفير meaning the صاد the زاء and the uh, سين likewise the ذال the jim and the sheen when they come after dal qad you recite with idhar for nafi' as a whole so مثلا you would say wala qad sarrafna wala qad sarrafna likewise you would say qad sami'a Allah qad sami'a Allah likewise مثلا you would say wala qad zayyanna wala qad wala qad zayyanna idhar bi dal likewise مثلا wala qad dharana wala qad dharana you recite with idhar for Nafi' طيب. and then the author mentions وزاد عيسى أي عيسى بن مينا and he's of course قالون الضاء والضاد مع the letter ضاء and the letter ضاد you recite it with إظهار uh, or you, re- you recite the دال of قد with إظهار when these letters also come after the uh, دال of قد so you add you attach ضاء and ضاد onto أحرف الصفير ذال جيم and شين so you for قالون meaning all of the letters in which there is potential khilaf and of course يعني من باب أولا the other remaining letters you also recite with idhar the reason why these special letters are mentioned is because there is khilaf between the qurra concerning to recite whether you recite it with idhar or, or not or whether there is idhar or not but the remaining letters for example if a, a, a dhal if it's followed by a hamza or it's followed by a ra مثلا or a dhal of qad is followed by a ra or it's followed by a ya you'd recite it with idhar for all of the qurra but it's these special letters in which there is potential khilaf and that's why they're mentioned here. طيب. And so, وزاد عيسى الضاء والضاد معا. So, the ضاء and the ضاد, you attach it onto the ذا الجيم شين and أحرف الصفير for قالون. Meaning قالون when it comes to the word قد and what comes after is أحرف الصفير uh, and the ذا and the جيم and the شين and likewise the ضاء and the ضاد يقرأ بالإظهار. Of course, we will see um, some exceptions. So, the تاء مثلا we will see the حكم for it later. طيب. That's where all of the قراء agreed. Uh, and the الشاطبي chapter that as babu tifaqihim fi dhali idh wa dhali qad wa ta'i ta'ni thisakina wa hal wa bal there is some ittifaqat that all the qurra agree we recite with idgham qawlan wahida tayyib and we'll speak about that later but the general principle is as I mentioned earlier okay wa zada isa al-dha'a wa al-dha'a ma'a then he says warshun al-idgham fihima ma'a but warsh he does idgham when the dal of qad is followed by a dha'a mathalan qala la qad al-dha'amak he recited with إدغام يسي قال لقد ظلمك قال لقد ظلمك طيب فو uh, فو ورش likewise the ضاد if the letter ضاد is coming after the دال قد you recite it with إدغام فو ورش قد ظلوا قد ظلوا وما كانوا uh, مهتدين طيب that's how you recite it for ورش so ورش when it comes to حرف الصفير and the ذال and the جيم and the شين he recites and when they come after the دال قد يقرأ بالإظهار but when it comes to the ضاء and the ضاد يقرأ بالإدغام يقرأ بالإدغام نعم then the author he says والتاء للتأنيث حيث تاتي مظهرة عند الصفيريات 
So here now the author, and of course, then the author mentions So now the author goes on to mention حكمه, uh, You have here the التأنيث, The أصل that you recite it with إظهار The أصل is that you recite it with إظهار When these letters come after it For example مظهرة عند الصفيريات يعني نحرف الصفير We know it's the صاد الزاي عندي سين مثلا حصرت صدورهم We don't say حصرت صدورهم Rather we start with الإظهار حصرت صدورهم حصرت صدورهم And this is applicable for نافع as a whole So ورش عن قالون Likewise مثلا عند السين مثلا وجاءت سيارة وجاءت سيارة طيب Likewise the زاي For example مثلا كلما خبت زدناهم كلما خبت زدناهم You start with إظهار نعم. Likewise, والجيم وعند الجيم أيضا. So when the third letter followed by a jim, you also recite with an ظهارا. So you say فإذا وجبت جنوبها فإذا وجبت جنوبها. نعم. Likewise, when it comes to the ثاء, when it comes to the ثاء, مثلا كذبت ثمود. You recite with an ظهار. You recite with an ظهار. طيب. وزاد الضاء أيضا وبالإدغام ورش جاء. The خلاف بين قالون الورش occurs on the ضاء. When ta it ta'nith is followed by a dha, qara'a qalunun bil idhar wa qara'a warshun bil idhar. And so when it comes to all of the remaining letters, like the author mentioned, so the safiriyyad, likewise the jim and the tha, warshun qalun agree to recite with idhar. But on the dha, they differed. On the dha, they differed. Fa qara'a qalunun bil idhar wa qara'a warshun, qara'a qalun bil idhar wa qara'a warshun bil idhar. And so warsh would say, mathalan qawlai ta'ala, حمل الظهورهما حمل الظهورهما هي الرسالة ويد الإدغام ورش أسف قالون حملت ظهورهما بالإظهار then you say he says ويظهران هل وبل الطاء والضاء والتاء معا والثاء والضاد معجما وحرف السين والزاي الجهر وحرف النون so here now the author mentions the حكم the ruling pertaining to هل وبل لام هل وبل. So these are the letters that can come after it in which there is potential uh, خلاف between the قراء concerning whether there is إظهار or إظهار. قرأ قانون ونافع نافع عن قانون recite with إظهار. When these letters come after هل وبل مثلا بل طبع بل طبع. Another example مثلا بل تأتيهم بل تأتيهم بل ظننتم. Right مثلا uh, هل تعلم لهم سمية مثلا. Likewise هل ثوب الكفار. Likewise with the ضاد مثلا قول الله تعالى بل ضلوا بل ضلوا Likewise you have مثلا uh, uh, the scene or حرف السين بل سولت لهم Right another example مثلا uh, بل زينا Right uh, and of course the زاي is the الجهري the زاي has the صفة of الجهر as we know the جهر is opposite is صفة uh, it's opposite صفة is الهمس فحثه مهموسها فحثه شخص سكت so the زاي زي نون همس لته وحرف النون likewise the letter نون مثلا قول الله تعالى بل نقذف right and likewise هل ندلكم so you recite the lam with إظهار when these letters come after it so ورش قال don't have إدغام so in summary when it comes to ذال إذ those six letters that come after it you recite with إظهار for ورش and قالون when it comes to ذال قد those letters apart from the ضاد and the ضاء you do إظهار for both ورش and قالون when it comes to the ضاء and the ضاد coming after ذال قد you do إدغام for ورش when it comes to تاء التأنيث الساكنة then you recite with إظهار on the letters that come after except for the ضاء for ورش ورش قرابي الإظهار حمل الظهورهم قرابي الإدغام حمل الظهورهم بالإدغام right with the ضاء أسف قالون in all the letters that come after the letter تاء التأنيث الساكنة that you also mentioned you recite with الإظهار for قالون إدغام for ورش in ضاء and إظهار in the in the remainder and then we have the uh, final one lam hal wabal when it comes to lam hal wabal you recite with izhar uh, on the letters that come after whether it be the wa or the ta or the ta or the tha or the zad sin zai and annun you recite with izhar for both warsh and qalun طيب هذا والله اعلم uh, we'll stop here باذن الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته